Hi again and welcome to another IPD Tech Session. Today we'll be going over timing belt replacement and what Volvo calls the red engine. This engine was used from 1976 up until the mid-90s and came in both a turbo and non-turbo variant. This instructional does not cover the 16 valve, it covers the engines that are B21 through the B230. There are some small differences from engine to engine and we'll go over each one of these as we go through this replacement. To get to the point where I'm starting from, you'll need to remove the four 10mm nuts holding on mechanically driven fans and the fan shroud. Vehicles with an electric fan will not need to remove this. You'll also need to remove the fan belts that go from the water pump, crank, to the alternator, from the crank to the air conditioning, and from the air conditioning to the power steering. 1985 and earlier engines have a two-piece crank pulley with six 10mm nuts that must be removed to take off the air conditioning belt. We'll start disassembly by taking off the upper timing cover. It has two 10mm bolts, a 12mm bolt, and a screw right on the back side at the top. Earlier engines use a one-piece cover with three 10mm bolts and a 12mm bolt. Before going any further, line up the crankshaft marks on the lower timing cover at the zero mark. We painted ours red so it's easier to see. Yours may be covered with dirt and grease and you may have to look closely to find them. The next step is to take off the 24mm crankshaft bolt. You'll need to hold the crankshaft still to do this. For engines 1985 and later, you can use IPD tool part number T5284. For earlier engines, a chain wrench or impact wrench works well. The next step is to install the counter stay. You'll use the existing nut from the timing belt tensioner. Once it's installed, Use a 24 millimeter socket to remove the bolt. The next step is to remove the counter stay if you've installed one by taking off the original tensioner nut. Remove the counter stay. Temporarily reinstall the washer and nut on the tensioner. And remove the crankshaft pulley. Unlike many crankshafts, this one is not a tapered fit. It has a keyway at the bottom which fits snugly once the bolt is tightened. A slight wrapping with a hammer may be necessary to remove it. The next step is to remove the 12 millimeter bolt and the 10 millimeter bolt from the lower timing cover and the crankshaft washer. The next step is to find the three marks used for indexing the timing belt. The camshaft, the intermediate shaft, and the crankshaft. The next step is to line up the camshaft gear dimple, which we've painted white, with the corresponding rib on the rear of the timing cover. You may need to rotate the engine slightly to bring the two into alignment. The next step is to compress the tensioner to relieve the tension off of the belt for removal. Start by loosening up the nut on the tensioner and press the tensioner toward the center of the engine against the tensioner spring. Tighten the nut back up and remove the belt. If you'll be replacing the front engine seals, you can use the old timing belt to hold the cam gear in place while you loosen the nut. Remove the camshaft gear and the washer behind it. Check the timing belt tensioner bearing. Rotate it in your fingers. It should feel smooth. If it feels rough or like it has rocks in it, it's probably due for replacement. You'll have to take the tensioner off to get the back cover off. Well, now that it's fully compressed, you'll want to insert a pin into the retention hole and loosen up the bolt. Remove it in the washer and the tensioner from the front of the engine. 
You can now remove the back cover, just a little bit of wiggling. To remove the seal, I use a flat blade screwdriver and come in gently against the inner portion of the camshaft. With a little bit of outward pressure, you'll have to work around the seal until you can pry it out. When installing the new seal, use just a little assembly grease or thin lubricant on the inside and outside edges of the seal. Using your fingers, press the seal in until it's just past the end of this camfered edge. The intermediate shaft seal is done identically to the camshaft seal. Pay attention to the orientation of the crank gear and washer as it's possible to incorrectly install them on some models. Make notes if necessary and be very careful if you have to pry the crank gear off as it's made of a very soft metal and is easily nicked which can lead to premature belt failure. For the crankshaft seal, remove the gear and washer. The seal comes out and goes in exactly like the other two. A common mistake is improper seating of the timing belt tensioner. This will cause the belt to ride on the outside edge of the front portion of the gear. Be sure the tensioner is fully seated against the block before final assembly. Reinstall the back cover, the timing belt tensioner, the camshaft gear, the intermediate shaft gear, and the crankshaft gear. You'll notice the new timing belt has two single marks and one double mark. The two single marks align to the camshaft and the intermediate shaft while the double mark aligns to the crankshaft. If the marks don't seem to line up, you may have the belt backwards. Install the new timing belt onto the engine starting at the camshaft, working to the intermediate shaft, the crankshaft, and finally at the tensioner. Be sure no slack exists between the camshaft and intermediate shaft or the intermediate shaft and the crankshaft. Be sure to check your single mark on the cam, the single mark on the intermediate shaft, and the double mark on the crankshaft. You'll note that initially the double mark on the timing belt doesn't seem to align with anything on the crankshaft. However, if the belt was folded all the way over, it would line up with the keyway. The tensioner self-adjusts, so loosen up the nut, allow it to fully extend, and then retighten. Don't forget to put on your lower crank washer first before you put on the lower timing cover. Be sure to line up the crankshaft pulley keyway with the key on the crankshaft when you install the crankshaft pulley. Rotate it until you feel it set in. Install the counter stay if you have one to tighten the crankshaft nut back up. Torque the crankshaft bolt to 122 foot-pounds. Reinstall the upper cover. We hope this explains and illustrates the timing belt removal and installation on the Volvo Red Engine. If the marks are aligned as we have demonstrated, the belt is correctly installed. However, don't be too concerned if you think it may be misaligned. This engine family is non-interference, so the valves and pistons will not contact and no damage will occur. The engine will simply not run correctly. If the engine does not run as it did before replacement, start over and repeat the installation steps to gain proper alignment. If you're running into trouble, you can always call us at 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at 800-444-6473.